Hello and welcome to this tutorial which I've called Creating a Custom Sequence to the Magic Bullet. And I've called it that because it's a way of creating a sequence that doesn't require you to know the numbers. Now in the previous tutorial I showed you how to create a new sequence using the new items icon here. Click on the word sequence and then I showed you to go to the general tab and if you do this drop down at the top you can go to desktop which allows you to dial in numbers assuming that you know the numbers. But what if you don't know the numbers? What if you want to create a sequence and you genuinely don't know the size of the footage, the frame rate, but you still need to create a sequence to work with? How do you go with that? Well, I'm just going to click cancel and go back out of this. The first thing to say is that in Premiere Pro CS5, you can mix and match different types of footage in the same sequence. You don't have to have a different sequence for, say, HDV, for RED footage, for AVC Intra, or for your Canon D5. You don't need to have a separate sequence. They can all go into exactly the same sequence. So sequences take on a less important role, if you like, than they did in previous versions, where you had to have a sequence to match your footage at all times. Now you can mix and match footage in the same sequence, which is a big step forward for CS5. So what you need to do to be able to create custom sequences with the magic bullet, which is one icon that I'm going to show you a bit later on, is firstly to open up Premiere Pro and select any sequence setting to get the program open. It doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter if it's the wrong one, it doesn't matter if it doesn't match your footage, just choose any sequence setting to get a sequence open. I haven't got a sequence here at all, I've actually closed all my sequences off just to demonstrate this. Now, once you have opened it up, then go to your project panel and import your footage. Now, what I have here is quite interesting. I've got something that was originally taken on HDV, and then courtesy of Adobe, I've got some red footage, I've got some AVC intro footage, and something that was moved to a Canon D5. And at the bottom, I have a dynamically linked composition, custom composition, from After Effects. Now, if I want to create a new sequence to match any of these, and say I don't know the numbers, what's the easiest way of doing it? Well, Premiere Pro now has an icon that works in a very similar way to the new comp icon in After Effects. Uh, it's not quite as obvious as the new comp icon in After Effects, but it does pretty much the same job, and it's actually this icon here, which we call the new item icon. Now the new item icon can be used to create lots of different bits and pieces you can create a sequence from here. So I could click sequence and I could, as I showed you before, either select a preset or I could dial in numbers if I choose desktop. But there's a much simpler way of doing it. Now let's just take, for instance, our red footage here. Grab the red footage, I drag it down, while well, holding my mouse down till it's on top of the new items icon and I get that little plus to the bottom right of the hand and then I let go and my machine whirs up and a new sequence is created that fits in the red footage. So here is, this is red footage here. Takes a moment to render. Now this yellow bar at the top here says, we think it should play back normally, but you might need to render it first. Well, on this particular machine, you do need to render it first. And if you want to render it, hit the return button on your keyboard and it'll render it and then you'll be able to play it back quicker. But let's now look at the sequence. If I go to sequence, sequence settings, you'll see here that, look, look at the size, 2816, by 2304, it's already telling me that it's 24 frames per second. So I can see that the sequence has been set up as per the red footage. So my sequence is made. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to know the figures. All I needed to do was take hold of the footage, grab it, and drop it on the new items icon. And I click OK. Now, if I want to add footage to this composition that is not red footage, all I need to do is take my animals footage, Click it, drag it, and drop it on the timeline, and let go. And I can move my mouse across to it, and there it is. The footage is brought in, and as you can see, when I brought this footage in, I did not have the default to frame size checkbox clicked. So it's gone in at its full size. This is HDV, but bear in mind, of course, red is an awful lot bigger than HDV. And to make that fit, I would have to scale it. And also, we can do the same. Let's take the AVC Intra, grab that, and drop it onto my timeline take my cursor across and as you can see that fits because when this footage was brought in I did have this particular option let me just show you preferences general default scale to frame size I had that checked so that the footage would come in and try and scale up to the frame size problem with that of course is that I could lose quality 
Now, the final thing I want to show you is this composition down the bottom. This is a custom composition from After Effects I used in another training video. If I go to After Effects, this is the particular one, and I go to the Composition Composition Settings, you'll see that this particular one is huge. It's 3,500 by 2,000, and note the frame rate. It's 60 frames per second. Click OK and go back to Premiere Pro. First thing I can do is I could take that composition and I can drag it down to the new items icon and let go. And what it will do, I'm just going to zoom into it, is it will create a new sequence with the dynamically linked composition. I can tell it's dynamically linked because of the lavender color. That's exactly the same size and frame rate as the original composition. So let's go to sequence, sequence settings, and you'll see that it's 3,500 by 2,000 and it is 60 frames per second. And if we look at it, the footage is five seconds long, which is exactly what I had in After Effects. So I've been able to bring it across, and of course I could now, if I want, say take the red footage, drag it and drop it in, then I can move my current time indicator to above the red footage, and there it fits in pretty well, but notice of course it's not as big as the After Effects composition, which is even bigger than red footage. So that's how you can create compositions that match exactly your footage, regardless of what it is, without having to know what the footage was and what you have to set it up with in the first place. You just take your footage and you drag it down to the new items icon. Well, my name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.